we will be discussing about what are the important aspects of general examination what about the cranial nerves how to write an exam and we are not going to discuss about the details of examination we will be writing stressing of the important aspects of each cranial nerve motor system upper and lower limbs along with sensory system skull and spine carotid arteries are bruised with a neat cns history what you start is a higher mental function and what is commonly seen what the disorder of higher mental function that is commonly seen in practice is speech disturbance what you assess in speech and other aspects of higher mental function we will definitely see about orientation memory handed memory immediate recent and long term memory depends on we know basics of how to assess each aspect handedness is important as everybody knows it's very simple thing most right handed individuals are having a left dominant why we want to know the handedness is dominant hemisphere lesions only produce speech defects and other higher mental function abnormality these speech defects are common with dominant lobe lesion and interestingly even with the left handed individual individuals around 40 to 50% it's the left side which is dominant aspects of speech we'll be discussing most important is fluency comprehension repetition and naming this should be there to assess what is the deficit what is the speech deficit the patient has in cranial nerves you should specifically focus on third nerve fourth nerve sixth nerve which have a common pathway then fifth nerve seventh nerve eleventh and twelfth nerve which have specific functions so that sometimes the examination becomes complicated how do you examine the third fourth and sixth now it is easy it's the it's very simple you have to check for the pupil light reflex eye movement and nystagmus convergence and accommodation to have a simple assessment a light is shown in the right eye a right eye pupil does not constrict but the left eye left pupil constricts what is the deficit so you should know the light reflex direct and consensual for this patient if you see right side it is function right eye functioning or not definitely it is functioning because the afferent pathway afferent pathway is functioning that is why there is a indirect right this left eye pupil is constricting right eye is not constricting indirect is present direct is not present that means afferent is intact on the right side efferent that is third nerve which constricts the pupil is not functioning on the right side so that is how you assess these are basic points just to re reassess your knowledge and reinforce certain concepts in pupillary reflexes accommodation reflex also is important the three components of accommodation reflex 